Learning Module 9, Design by the Direct Analysis Method. We'll begin by defining the geometry for the frame. To do this, select Geometry, Define Frame. Then down at the bottom, we'll have one bay at 240 inches and one story at 144 inches. Hit apply, and we have our frame. By default, Mastan places all of the elements with their web or y-axis, their local y-axis, in the global xy plane. So with this in mind, all the members right now are, would be subject to major axis bending. We want the column subject to minor axis bending. To do this, we'll need to rotate the columns or reorient them. So under geometry, select reorient elements. We select the two columns, and down at the base, we would like to have them rotated 90 degrees. Hit apply, and the columns have been rotated. We can check our column orientation by going under View, Labels, and selecting Element Web Local Y. You can now see a blue tick mark has appeared, meaning that for the beam, the member would be subject to major axis bending. The blue tick mark represents the local wire web. We can't see the blue tick mark in the columns, so these must be, the tip marks must be pointing at us. So their columns must be subject to minor axis bending. We can see all of this if we go under View, Define Views, and Isometric. Now you can see the tick marks for both the beams and the columns, and you can see that the webs for the columns are in their minor axis. Before moving on, We'll go back and define our view for a front view, and we'll turn off the tick marks. We'll now subdivide the columns into four elements. So under Geometry, we'll select Subdivide Elements. We'll select the two columns. And at the bottom, we'll advance the number of segments, so it reads four and hit apply. The geometry of the frame is now defined and we'll move on and define the properties, both the section properties and the material properties. So under properties, select define section. And again, we could type in the values, but instead we'll use the AIC database. So click on database. And then on the right, we'll scroll down until we find the columns, which are gonna be W12 by 58. So there's the W12 by 58. And again, when I click on it, all the properties for W12 by 58 are typed in below. But I do have to hit apply to define section one as a W12 by 58, so I hit apply. Now I can move on and define the beams, which are W24 by 76. So I'll scroll up, find the W24 by 76, click on it, properties typed in down below, hit apply, and the two sections have been defined. We'll now attach those section properties to the elements. So under Properties, we select Attach Section. In this case, we'll first attach the W12 by 58 section property 1 to all the column elements. So we'll select All, and then we'll click on Beam Element 1 to remove it from the list, and we'll hit Apply. So the columns have been defined as section property 1, or W12 by 58. We'll advance the section to section two, which is the W24 by 76. We'll clear the list, and then we'll add to the list just the beam. Hit apply, and the section properties for the beams and columns have been attached. Using a similar approach, we'll now define the material properties. So we'll select properties, define material. We'll provide the material a name, say steel, now when we use the direct analysis method, the stiffness of the lateral system needs to be reduced by a factor of 0.8. We'll do that by factoring E. So down at the bottom here, we'll have 0.8 times 29,000. Our FY value will be set to 50,000 or 50 KSI. And then we'll hit apply. We can now attach that material 
to the elements. So we select properties, attach material. Material one will be set to all elements. Then we hit apply. And at this point, our section and material properties have been defined and attached to all the elements. We'll now go on and define the boundary conditions. Under conditions, select define fixities. And at the base of our frame, the X and Y translation are restrained. We'll select the bottom two nodes, node one and node two here, and hit apply and the boundary conditions have been defined. Before defining the forces on our structure, we need to consider which method we'll be using within the direct analysis method. Uh, for this tutorial, what I'm gonna do is model the imperfections. So we won't be using notional loads. We're actually gonna distort our model to include the initial frame out of plumb. To do that, what we'll do is put on a lateral load. So under conditions, we'll define a force. And up at node three here, we're gonna apply a lateral force. We could just put on 10 kips. It doesn't matter what value you provide. All we need to do is just push the frame a little bit to the right. We'll hit apply. Now we'll go in, perform a first order elastic analysis. Down at the base, we'll need to set that to planar frame and hit apply and the analysis has been performed. If we go under results, diagrams, and deflected shape, we can see the deflected shape of the frame. Now what we'd like to do is scale the deflections at node three to be the height of the frame divided by 500. So to do this under results, update geometry, we can select node three and we would like the deflections to occur in the X direction. And we would like it to be the height of the frame, which was 144 and divided by 500. Hit apply. And the geometry of our frame has now been updated to include an initial imperfection. We can turn off the diagram and we can go back to forces and let's remove that force and hit apply. And at this point, we now have a frame that is initially out of straight by the height of the frame divided by 500. We can confirm this by going under geometry, information, and node. When we click on any of the nodes, it'll tell us all the information about it. So if we'll click on node three, down at the base, we can see that node three, the X coordinate is 0 0.288, which is 144 inches divided by 500. So we're sure now that the initial imperfection has been defined. With the initial imperfections defined and confirmed, we can now go and put on the loading. So this will be done under conditions, define forces. We'll define a lateral load of 10 kips and a gravity load of minus 100. We'll click on node three, and then we'll hit apply. We'll now apply the load on node four. So we'll clear the list. We'll zero out the lateral load. We'll leave the P sub Y at minus 100. We'll click on node four and we'll hit apply. At this point, all of the pre-processing is now complete. As I indicated earlier, there are two variations of the direct analysis method. In this case, we've decided to include the initial imperfections directly and we'll also be using the toss of B factor. This option is available under analysis, second order, inelastic. Before running the analysis, we'll need to set the parameters. So we'll use a solution type of predict a corrector. The analysis type will be needed to be changed to planar frame. Our load increment size will be changed to 0 0.05. We'll run up the number, maximum number of increments to a large number, say 100. We'll leave our maximum applied load ratio at one. And our modulus elasticity will be set to E sub T, and that is the toss of B factor within AISC. And we can then hit apply, and our analysis will be completed. We can now go under results and record the axial force in moments. So we'll select results, diagrams, 
axial force. We can now hit apply and see the axial force distribution in the system. Some of the values might be a bit tough to view, so what we can do here is go under View, select Defined Views, and Isometric View. Now we can better read the forces in the columns and in the beam. Actually, it appears that these values are still pretty tough to read. Um, perhaps what we should do is turn off the node and element numbers. To do this, we'll select View, Labels, Node Numbers. And again, View, Labels, Element Numbers. After recording the axial forces in the members, we can now plot the major and minor axis bending moment. We can view the major axis bending moment in the beam by selecting Results, Diagrams, Moment Z, and then selecting Apply. As you can see, the columns have no bending because they're subject to minor axis bending. And we can read that on the left end of the beam, there's looks like 1087, and on the right side, 1076 of moment. In a similar way, we can go on and plot the minor axis bending moments in the columns. To do this, we'll select Results, Diagrams, Moment Y, and then hit Apply to view the values. At this point, we would have recorded all of the forces that we needed from the analysis. We've completed the direct analysis method using a prescribed initial imperfection and the AIC TOS sub B factor. This concludes Learning Module 9's tutorial.